Hello everyone and welcome. This is Lisa. Thanks for joining me for another video tutorial. Today we're going to be uh, doing a double pleated fold, which is really just a fold of designer series paper that really does showcase it. See, this is the card that we're making and it really shows that designer series paper off well. So let's get started. I'm using the Country Lane um, suite that is in the 2018 holiday catalog. I absolutely fell in love with it when I first saw it and um, it is on page 42 and 43 in the catalog if you're interested and we're going to be using the designer series paper, the ribbon, and one of the sentiments. So this is the designer series paper. It is 10 inches by 5 inches and that other piece was Blackberry Bliss and it is 3 and 7 eighths inches by 5 inches. Now what I'm showing you here is that the pattern paper has a direction to it. So you want to pay attention to that when you go to score. Make sure that if it's an up pattern, you keep that up. So you want to start on the opposite side of the paper, which is the, the side of the paper that you want to show the most. And I'm using the large ball tip, which I don't usually do on designer series paper, but we need to make this pleated. so. Um, that's why I'm doing that. And I apologize. I did not realize that I was off camera here. Something is wrong with my monitor. Again, I'll have to have Mr. Ed to have a look at that when he has a moment. But, uh, the score marks are, uh, this, the score measurements are here. And of course, as usual, all of the measurements will be on my blog, but there they are. But don't feel that you need to write them down now. It's funny when you are making videos, <laughs> you think you have it all right and all set up and there's always something that goes wrong. It never fails. You have an editing problem or <laughs> you have a piece of film that you accidentally deleted. Something always goes wrong. It's kind of funny, really. So I do appreciate your patience. So now I realize that you totally couldn't see what I was doing. So I'm going to just rattle off those score marks to you once again, which is one, one and a half, two and a half, three, four, four and a half, five and a half, six, seven, seven and a half, eight and a half, and nine. Okay. Now we're going to take our pencil and we're going to make a mark at the four and a half inch line there and there's a score it's scored so you can see where it is so four and a half and then we're going to move over to the five and a half inch and make another mark going to flip the paper around and do the same thing four and a half and five and a half this is actually the center of the paper now we're going to turn it the other way we aren't going to score but we're going to make a mark at the two inch and three inch and we're going to do this at the top and bottom as well because we'll be using our paper trimmer to cut on the diagonal. That's why we're making these marks. Okay, so now we have that done. I'm going to bring in the Stampin' Trimmer and we're going to cut our paper. Now I slowed this down just a little bit just so that you can see exactly what I'm doing. So I hope this doesn't bore you too much, but I don't want you to get confused. The best thing I can tell you is always choose the marks that are closest to the scoring blade. That way you won't end up with a point on the end. And I can't tell you how many pieces of paper I destroyed trying to figure this out. So, um, and I did do it opposite. Like I did one side of the paper and then I did the bottom side and then flipped it around and did the same thing again. That way it sort of kept me oriented as to where I was and needed to be. And you also want to make sure that your, your pencil marks are right in that track. So, cause if they get a little bit off, then your, uh, pieces, your fold is going to be crooked. So do your best to get right in there. 
And this is our last cut here. So then you end up with this weird looking guy. And this paper is so pretty. I don't want to throw those away. So I'm going to set them aside. Maybe I'll figure something out to do with them. Okay, so now we're done with our cutting and our scoring. So we're going to fold now. You start in the middle and you just fold back and forth. As you can see now, this is why I used that larger tip on the scoring stylus. And reinforce that with your bone folder and then just flip it over and do the same thing with the other side. You will be able to see just a tiny bit of the back, but that's okay because the paper does coordinate, as does all stamping up paper. It's one thing I love about stamping up. Okay, so now we have our piece and we're going to mount it onto our Blackberry Bliss here. So I'm going to use some fast fuse because you really need something that's very strong or else it'll pop off of your cardstock. So you could use tear and tape or glue. Either one of those would work just fine. I don't think that snail would hold it. So, um, and fast fuse is in the clearance rack right now. So if you are a fast fuse fan, hurry up, run in there and get yourself some fast fuse. There's refills left. I, as of this morning, there was refills and regular, the regular um, cartridge and everything. So now what I'm doing is I'm lining those little tiny sides up with the edges of the cardstock. So as you can see, everything lined up perfectly and everything met in the middle like it was supposed to. So now I'm bringing in a piece of Whisper White. And I'm going to take the Blackberry Bliss and I'm going to stamp one of the sentiments from the Country Home stamp set. And then I'm going to use one of the oval stitched dies from the stitched uh, framelit dies collection. I ran that through my Big Shot. And now we're going to adhere that to the top of our pleated fold there. And I'm just using four dimensionals. We almost have our card complete here. All true crafters have dimensional backings flying all over their craft rooms or all over where they're working <laughs> because we just rip them off and let them fly wherever. So there it is. And now I'm going to use this detailed trio punch and I'm going to punch the corners all the way around. And there we have that. And I'm bringing back in my fast fuse and I'm going to attach it to a regular five and a half by four and a quarter uh, whisper white thick uh, cardstock piece. Okay. Finally, I got it down straight, at least relatively straight, I think. And then next it needs one more little thing and that's a little bow. And this ribbon is awesome because you can keep it as I have it there or you can just pull it apart and it frays and that looks really cool too and vintage. So this ribbon is definitely a must have. So, and all of these things are available in my store including the clearance rack, the fast fuse. So just hop over to my blog and shop in my store and I would appreciate your business. Okay, so our card is all finished and there's the one that I had made before. I really appreciate you spending time with me today and I hope you have a wonderful afternoon. Thanks again and happy crafting.